Today on Bold Steps, Mark Job encourages us to throw off anything that hinders our faith. You have to learn that there's certain weight that you have to put aside and say, I'm going to run as well as I can and as long as I can in this faith race without being weighted down by other things. Welcome to Bold Steps with Mark Job, president of Moody Bible Institute and senior pastor of New Life Community Church in Chicago. I'm Wayne Shepherd. As we continue our topical study on faith, we'll be learning what it means to have a winning faith. And Mark, let me ask you, are you a runner? <laughs> Wayne, I have been a runner. I consider myself a lapsed runner. No, no, no. Let's say a runner on pause. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, runners know, as Hebrews says, that we need to throw off all that weight that encumbers us. When I went to run in before in my past life, I never put on a backpack. I never put on big, heavy boots. I didn't wear a big coat. I would try to get as light as possible because you run best when you're unencumbered. So let's get into today's message. It comes from Hebrews chapter 12. It's titled, Running with Winning Faith. Here's Mark Job. I heard recently about two gas men that were out reading meters in the neighborhood. And they went up to one house and they saw an elderly woman looking out the window as they read the gas meter. Where these two guys were diehard Sox fans. And so as soon as they read the meter... They said to each other, hey, let's run to the van to make sure we catch the score of the game. So they ran as fast as they could to their van, turned on the radio. By the time they got to their van, they turned around, they heard huffing and puffing, and it was this elderly woman that had run after them. And they said, are you okay, man? She said, yes. They said, why are you running? She said, anytime I see two gas men running away from a house, I run too. Well, sometimes we run and we not, we're not sure why we're running, right? But this passage in Hebrews chapter 12 is all about the race of faith. How to run with winning faith. And this is a powerful passage. In fact, it tells us in this passage, beginning in verse 1, it makes reference to chapter 11. Now, chapter 11 is the Faith Hall of Fame. And the writer of the Hebrews has just talked to us about all these heroes of faith. From Abraham to Moses to Enoch to Gideon to Samson to Jephthah. Mentions all these people that are faith heroes. And maybe you're here this morning and say, Hey, I, I like what I read in Hebrews chapter 11 from these faith heroes. I mean... After all, look at what it says in verse 33. It says, these people of faith, you know what they did? Who through faith conquered kingdoms. You say, I like that. They administered justice. They gained what was promised. Hey, these people even shut the mouths of lions. Remember Daniel? They quenched the fiery flames and they escaped the edge of the sword whose weakness was turned to strength, who became powerful in battle. They routed foreign armies. You say, wow, man, they turned armies around with their faith. Yeah. And you say, I like all that stuff. Man, I want to have that kind of faith. Turn around armies, raise people from the dead, shut the mouths of lions. All this power, yes. Well, well, wait, wait, I'm not done reading. And then it says, and others, these were also heroes of faith. Others, look at the middle of verse 35. They were tortured and they refused to be released so that they may gain a better resurrection. And some faced jeers and floggings while still others were chained and put in prison. Verse 37, they were stoned, not cocaine stoned, but stoned with rocks. And they were sawed in two, and they were put to death by the sword, and they went about in sheepskin and goatskin, and they were destitute and persecuted and mistreated. And hey, the world was not even worthy of them. And these also were the heroes of faith. 
You see, I want you to understand that faith doesn't always cause us to overcome every problem. That sometimes faith gives us the ability to go through our problem. Hello? Uh, you see, we all want faith to solve our problem. We want faith that heals us, not faith that gives us the power to go through our sickness. Uh, hey, we want faith that gets us another job. We don't want faith that gives us the power to deal with a unjust, uh, nagging boss. Hey, we want faith that changes our wife. Oh, God, I'm praying. Change your Lord. Change your attitude. I'm, I'm believing in Jesus' name. I'm claiming that you'll close her mouth, Lord. I'm claiming that you'll change your attitude. God, I'm claiming all this. And we want faith to change our wife, but we don't want faith to love our wife. And to endure. You see what I'm saying is that oftentimes we want the kind of faith that changes our circumstances. But the Bible talks about not only the faith that changes our circumstances. But faith that gives us the ability to endure our circumstances. And so in Hebrews chapter 12. The author of the Hebrews turns his attention to this kind of faith. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great a cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race that's marked off for us. Now it says, therefore, every time you see the word therefore in the Bible, you ask yourself what? What is it therefore? Therefore. And when you see the word therefore, it typically refers to uh, highlighting the context of the previous passage. He's just talked about all the heroes of faith, and he says, therefore, since there are these heroes of faith, I want you to remember, since we are surrounded by such a great a cloud of witnesses. You see, the imagery that we have here is the image of a, an arena. The Romans were infamous for building these grandiose arenas in which thousands of people would gather as spectators to watch sports. And sometimes these sports were cruel and violent. Uh, the gladiators would compete in these arenas. But they also had competitive sports like running and other kinds of sports and th that they borrowed from the Greeks. And now we have actually the tradition of the modern day Olympics that came from that era. And so the writer of the Hebrews makes reference to the idea of us running our life in faith and saying, imagine an arena with thousands and thousands of people. And who is filling that stadium? All the heroes of faith that have gone before us. Hey, over there, I, I see Abraham. There he is. Yeah, that guy. And, and over there, there's David. And, and, and there's Gideon. Yeah, remember Gideon? With 300, he made the armies run. Hey, and over there, th th there's, th there's Isaac. A and I see over there, there's Enoch who walked with God and was no more. And over there, there's Noah who built this big boat. When people laughed at him, it took him 100 years to build it. And over there, there's Elijah. And he raised a few people from the dead. And look at all these heroes of faith that have gone before. There's King David. And man, look at this array of faith heroes. And where are you? You're running down in the stadium. And these faith heroes are saying, hey, I've been there. Come on, don't give up. Hey, keep going. Come on, keep going. Imagine a cloud of witnesses of people that have gone before and run the race and they are watching you as you run, and they are cheering you on. They are hooraying you when you win. When you persevere, they're saying, go get them, and you hear their voices rise, not at spectators who know nothing about the sport of running in faith, but people who have run before you and have won. He says, I want you to picture that. Since you are surrounded... By such a great a cloud of witnesses. The word, by the way, for witnesses means testifiers. And we get the same English word for martyrs from this word. 
And these aren't just people that were martyred. Not all of them were martyred, but there's people that have gone before and they testify, they witness, they support us, they cheer us on as we go ahead. So I want you to write this down. The first point of winning faith is winning faith releases baggage and doesn't get entangled. It releases baggage and doesn't get entangled. You see, here's what I want you to know about the faith run. The faith run is not a sprint. It's a long-term race. It's like a marathon. And if you've ever looked at the face of someone that's running hard, you will look at a face of not someone that's in pleasure, but someone that's in a little bit of pain. Because when you're running hard over a long distance, your body cries out for more oxygen, your legs ache, and your body is saying, this is difficult, this is tough. My mind goes to the image that was plastered on television and newspapers uh, a few years back of a fellow by the name of Derek Redman. He was of Great Britain, and he was running the 400-meter men's race. And halfway through, he had a hamstring injury that left him in severe, severe pain. But he had committed himself to finish the race. And so as he cried in agony and limped along, his father, Jim, who was out in the stands, came up beside him. And he didn't know who it was, so he pushed him away at first. And his father said, hey, it's me. I will help you finish. And so the crowd cheered as his father put his arm around Derek Redmond. And together they hobbled their way to the finish line. And although they went slow, and although they didn't win the race, they finished. And many of us understand that running the race is difficult. And it's painful at times. And some of you are in the middle of a faith race right now, and you are in agony. And maybe some of you are here today and you're saying, I don't know if I can make it another month. And Pastor, you don't understand that my faith right now is really, really thin. I mean, if one more thing is added to my plate, I think I'm going to tip over. I think God is speaking to you, especially this morning, saying, hey, you're not running this race alone. You have the arm of a father around you, and you may be limping, but you have the power of God surrounding you, helping you to finish that race. Amen? You're listening to Bold Steps with Mark Job, and today's message comes from our series called Don't Stop Believing. And if you'd like to hear this message again, or if you'd like to send it to a friend who needs to know how to run the faith race with confidence, you'll find a link to the sermon online at boldsteps.org. Mark will continue in a moment, but if you'd ever like to hear these Bible teachings while you're out on the go, perhaps on a work trip, even during a workout, you'll definitely want to subscribe to our podcast. You'll find us on most of the major podcast apps by searching for Bold Steps with Dr. Mark Job. Just don't forget to click subscribe while you're there and leave us a message and a five-star review to help others find the program. And did you know you can also find videos of Mark's teaching, even more Bold Steps content available on our new Bold Steps app. Whatever your interest, you'll find both long and short-form videos that speak to relevant topics and issues in your daily life. Open up your favorite app store today and download the Bold Steps app for free. Right now, let's discover more about running with winning faith. So it tells us, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. So since we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Now, this is interesting because... You're literally throwing two things off. Number one is you're throwing off the weight that hinders you. Now, it's not referring particularly to sin, we know, because later on it says the sin. How many of you know that something doesn't necessarily have to be wrong or sinful, but it can hold you back from what God is trying to do in your life? How many of you know that? How many of you know that that something can be a weight that slows you down? And oh, maybe it's not a sin, 
but it's something that keeps you from running your best. It slows you down from going all out for God. I have a duffel bag here with me on stage, and it's not light. And let's just imagine that it was time for the Chicago Marathon. Any of you here marathon runners for the Chicago Marathon? Any? Okay. All right. There's been a couple. And let's just say that it was time for the Chicago Marathon, and you're gathered together with several thousand people at the start line, and there you are with a big duffel bag on your back. Everybody else is just as light as possible. If you have a duffel bag and someone says, hey, why do you have that duffel bag? You say, oh, I'm, I'm prepared. I got extra shoes right here. I, get, I have my lunch in here just in case I get hungry halfway through it. I have four bottles of Gatorade right here. And guess what? I got a sweater in case it gets a little cold. I even have a first aid kit just in case I stub my toe. I am ready. In fact, if I get bored, I have a little portable TV right in here, okay? We are ready to go. Now you would look at that person and say, that's ludicrous. I mean, you're going to lose the race or you're definitely not going to run it fast. Because this weight has to be, by the way, in the Greek, it doesn't mean just put the weight down. It talks about like throwing the weight off. The point here is that some of us have issues in our life that aren't necessarily bad, but they slow you down. Hey, there's no verse in the Bible that says, Thou shalt not spend hours playing video games. But let me ask you this. There's probably something a little wrong when you spend 15, 20 hours a week playing video games but can't crack your Bible open. Hey, there's nothing on TV that says you can't watch, nothing in the Bible that says you can't watch reruns of I Love Lucy or The Three Stooges. But let me tell you, if you spend an average of 12, 20 hours with the television on, but you spend an average of maybe 30 minutes a week in the Bible, would you say that something's a little flip-flop there? Maybe it slows you down? Hey, we all love sports, don't we? And we're all into sports, but hey, when your sports begins to interfere with your spiritual walk, and when you can't come to church on some Sundays because you have to put your priorities straight and be there for your favorite sports team, let me tell you, that's a weight that's sort of slowing you down. Hey, we all have to make money, and God wants you to prosper and pay your bills and take care of your family, but when your job becomes the main focus of your life and you can't say no to overtime and you haven't been in church for about a month straight because you keep telling your boss, sure, I'll work on Sundays. Let me tell you, there's something about a weight that is slowing you down. And the Bible says if you're going to run the race that God has set before you, you have to learn that there's certain weight that you have to put aside and say, I'm going to run as well as I can and as long as I can in this faith race without being weighted down by other things. Now, sometimes what weighs us down is our past. I know some people that are dragging their past with them everywhere they go. They can't quite seem to worship God very well on Sundays because they're dragging with them this past of shame. God has said you're forgiven, but they say, well, I still, I'm carrying my shame with me. And some people have failures in their past they just can't quite get over. And everywhere you go, you drag your past of shame with you. And God is saying, listen, if you're going to run this race well, you need to throw aside the weight that slows you down. Not only cast aside the weight that throws you down, but the other thing he talks about doing is he says, not only throw aside the weight, but also the sin that so easily entangles you. Now, it's very interesting, this word for sin, because the word for sin that so easily entangles us, the original word means to ambush, to encircle, to entrap. You see, not only are you throwing aside the weight, but you're also throwing aside obvious sin. It's amazing how, mu- how many of us think that we can run the race 
and still carry our sin with us. Uh, you know, I coach soccer sometimes with my boys. And my seven-year-old Grant, for his age, he's quite a little soccer player. He knows how to dribble the ball. And he was like his little, he was the star player on his team this past year, I think, because he knows how to dribble a little bit. But never, it never fails that one of his shoes comes untied. And of course, he thinks he can play with it that way. But eventually, he trips on it. He steps on it. You see, and that's the way we are with sin. We think we can still run the race with that string of bitterness in our life. And you can for a while. And you get away with it for a while. You're running the race and it doesn't seem to be affecting you. But once in a while, you kind of trip over it. And you keep running. But if you run long enough, the day will come where that string of bitterness will wrap itself around your other foot and we keep running and we don't think it's that bad because we're running. But let me tell you, there's a lot of people on the sidelines of injury because when God spoke to their heart, they did not deal with what God was speaking to them about. listening to Bold Steps with Mark Job. You'll find us right here in your local station or online at boldsteps.org. On our homepage, you can also request your copy of our current Bold Step gift because, you know, one of the most liberating truths in life is that we don't have to prove our worth to God. Mark, that's why our current Bold Step gift is such an important resource. It's a book called Stop Trying, How to Receive, Not Achieve Your Real Identity, and it's written by Carrie Schmidt. And it's great to have Carrie in the studio with us today. And Carrie, you provide some very personal, practical guidance on how to break free from the cycle of trying to achieve your identity. And uh, you've told us after a struggle with cancer and some transitions, it exposed your own struggle with identity. So talk to me about how this shift from achieving to receiving can transform someone's life. Yeah, thank you, Mark. We are all performance-based, really more than we know. It's, mm. it's just kind of hardwired into our flesh. And, and our culture, our culture teaches us at a philosophical and a psychological level that we are what we do. Mm. And so we lean hard into what we can do well. And generally this works for us, gives us a strong sense of identity, uh, achievement, accomplishment, value, until we fail or lose our ability to achieve. And that moment exposes weakness. It exposes that our identity is more fragile than we knew. And uh, this is just sort of a risky hamster wheel kind of existence. Yeah. And, you know, culture comes at us with only two options. Either you define me or I define me. Mm -hmm. And when you tease those out, both of those options are really broken and lead me yeah. to a, a, a loss of self. Um, and the gospel steps into that and offers me a third alternative. I love that. And so Carrie's going to help us embrace a gospel identity. So I, I know, Carrie, there's so many, so many people, because as a pastor and as a leader, I'm engaged with people all the time that are struggling with this whole concept of identity. So You have it from the author himself, Stop Trying, How to Receive, Not Achieve Your Real Identity. Let us send you a copy of Stop Trying today by simply asking for the book when you make a donation of any size to our ministry. Go online to boldsteps.org or call us at 800-DL-MOODY. That's 800-356-6639. You can also send your gift through the mail. Write to us at Bold Steps, 820 North LaSalle Boulevard, Chicago, Illinois, 60610. And when you reach out to us, we want to encourage you to sign up to become a Bold Partner. Your monthly gifts will help us continue to equip your fellow listeners with truth and encouragement they need to run the race of faith and be a bold witness in this world. Plus, when you give a monthly gift of $30 or more, you'll also receive a number of personal benefits as well, including discounts on Moody Publisher items, special content from Mark and more. 
Becoming a Bold Partner is quick and easy when you go to boldsteps.org. On our website, be sure to take some time to learn more about Moody Bible Institute. Moody is a highly rated private non-denominational college located in the heart of downtown Chicago. And since 1886, Moody has been helping shape the lives and minds of thousands of students around the world with popular majors such as Bible studies, missionary studies, and pastoral counseling. So be sure to learn what's available in the coming up semester. Our web address once more is moody.edu. That's all the time we have today. On behalf of Mark Job and all of your friends at Bold Steps, I'm Wayne Shepherd, inviting you to join us again tomorrow to learn how we can run the faith race with perseverance. Our message is called Running with Winning Faith, and you can hear it Wednesday on the next edition of Bold Steps with Mark Job. Bold Steps is a production of Moody Radio, a ministry of Moody Bible Institute.